What's up guys? So I've had a lot of requests for the best exercises for jiu-jitsu. So specifically speaking for the gym, I do hip thrust, the add and adductor, the opening and closing the legs, scapular dips, some form of knees to chest, back extensions, and Turkish get-ups. So what I'm going to do is we're going to show this at the gym, and then I'm going to show how it applies here on the mats. I'll show beginner and advanced versions of all these techniques. Let's hit it. I'm going to jump right into the exercises. So exercise one here, I have hip thrust, beginner version, shoulders on the ground, from my shoulder to my hip to my knee. Right there, the tapping was me showing that straight line, straight line from the shoulder to the hip to the knee. And then one leg, it is more difficult. So very beginner, you use both legs. Next difficulty, you use one leg. Next difficulty, yep. You use a bench on your shoulder blades on the bottom of them and hip thrust off the heels. Still going for that straight line. And then you do a one-legged, still showing that straight line, straight line at the top. Boom, boom. Really curling my heel down to the mat. If you see my toes aren't on the ground when I do these, see my toes are off the ground. You can do it with weight to add more. Then you do one-legged with weight to add more pressure. Very good exercise for hip thrusts. I have to add and adductor machines. The ab and adductor. There's pinch in, right? you can do as much weight as you can, and then uh, I always do holds at the end of my sets, so I do my reps and I do a hold, and then here for Jiu Jitsu, to practice closed guard and triangle stuff, I'll cross my ankles and just squeeze for as hard and long as I can at the end of my sets. Same thing, just opening, practicing getting those legs open or freeing the knee in jiu-jitsu. And then same thing, hold at the end of the sets. All right, so scapular dips. I'm showing shrug, like you do the I don't know thing with your shoulders, or like, I don't know. You're gonna get on a bar and do that. You do I don't knows like that. Or to make it more realistic, you acting like you have frames, you put your elbows on a dip pad you do that and then you add weight and it says the more beginner version is you get into a push up position and then you do the same thing on the ground and then you just do the I don't know's with your shoulders it replicates uh, it replicates when you're on bottom side control and you're trying to extend those frames All right, now we have the beginner version of knee to chest never letting the feet touch the ground Lower back comes off the mat. It's the very beginner version. And then more advanced, you're standing with your, or you're on the, the dip machine with your ankles crossed. Knees come real high to the chest. Lower back comes off of the uh, pad to replicate your elevating somebody in closed guard or half guard. And then to make it more realistic, you can add weight. Cross your ankles, pinch between the knees, real high with the knees. Boom, all the way up. Boom. Boom. Uh, next is back extensions. Beginner version is Superman's. Feet and hands come as high off the ground as you possible as you possibly can. And then hold at the top of the rep. And this is super important on back extensions. I am not I'm gonna show how to do it wrong first. I am not bringing my head down and bringing my head back up using my back. So that's that's a bad example of what to do. I'm going to squeeze my glutes together and roll my hips forward like I'm doing an arm bar or like I'm doing an ankle lock. And you'll see the power that I can generate with this. See there's some hips rolled forward? Those are glutes. See I'm never going all the way down. My glutes are activated. And then same thing, I'll finish my sets and I'll, I'll do a really tight squeeze at the top to replicate holding a position in Jiu Jitsu. And then I'm going to show it with added weight, and more advanced version. So beginners on the ground, medium, you just do it. And then more advanced, you do it with weight. Again, it's the glutes. It's not the back extending. It's the glutes squeezing. I put it on my chest like I'm holding an arm bar. Yeah, see how the glutes squeeze there? And it wasn't like, it wasn't a movement from my head. It's a movement from my glutes. Big squeeze of the glutes. And lastly, Turkish get-ups. 
this replicates um, this replicates framing and uh, doing a tactical stand up. Like you just got taken down, you want to get back up so they don't score points. We're here. Boom. Flat on your back, arms straight up. Kick up, post on a hand. Kick up, look at this. Kick, post on a hand. Kick, and then leg comes under you, and then you stand all the way up, arms straight up the whole time. All right, guys, lastly, I'm going to put in the comments section, but I'm going to show how I do my workouts. Usually, I do my workouts on a six minute timer. I choose a workout. So, let's say I'm doing legs. I'll choose three exercises, and I'll put a six minute timer on, and I'll go each exercise for 30 seconds. So, let's say I do squat, lunge, and then I do tactical get ups or something along those lines. I'll put 30 seconds, or I'll put six on the clock, I'll start it, and I'll do one for 30 seconds another for 30 seconds and then another for 30 seconds and then I immediately start over because I'm trying to replicate a jiu-jitsu round which is it's five plus minutes right so if I do my exercises like I do my jiu-jitsu rounds it'll make my muscles used to working for that extended period of time so all these exercises you can add them into your workouts so if if we're talking about doing hip thrusts for leg day right I can do squats hip thrusts and I can do lunges or some other type of exercise and I'll do my six minutes right, again I'll put this in the comments section and then uh, if you don't want to do it like that and you want to work out your regular way then I would definitely suggest adding that squeeze at the end you finish your your set usually I recommend 12 to 15 reps you finish your set 15 and now you hold at the extended part of the position for as long as you can or for 15 seconds alright that's how I like to do my workouts for jiu-jitsu thanks guys all right, guys, so, so the first exercise, number one, we're going over hip thrusts, right? So the actual application of the hip thrust or the bridge in this scenario. So if somebody's in mount, I can bridge and do a trap bridge and roll. I can, I can do a small one to bump them forward to trap an arm, and then I can bridge and do a trap bridge and roll. I like doing one-legged hip thrusts a lot and one-legged bridges. So... I'll stomp on one and then I straighten my hips out and I hit them with the other leg. Boom, whether I'm in mount or I have an underhook in bottom half in bottom side control, and I bump, I can be in bottom half, the back leg, and I bump. But all of this comes from that same hip thrust motion, right? Number two, the uh, the ab and adductor machines where they're closing my legs and opening them. When it comes to guard retention, the opening of the legs is super important. A lot of people will try to bring your knees together when they're passing, because that's a very good rule of thumb, and then they bring your legs to one side. Here, I need to make strong frames, and then I need to pull my knees to my chest and open my legs to get my legs and my feet back in front of me. So I need to create frames with my shins and elbows, but when my legs are together, I can't make the frame with my elbow, or I can't make the frame with my leg. So I already have the upper body one, and now I'm coming in and I'm opening for that adductor, I'm opening up here to make sure that that leg gets back in front for framing. All right. For closing, there's a lot of positions in jiu-jitsu where we pinch our knees together to hold things. We can, we can hold feet, hold people's legs, hold people's arms. So it's a very, very, very important one. Usually, the way I like to think about it is I try to connect my feet first and then I pinch and the squeeze should be forever. So I should be able to set a timer for an hour or 45 minutes and I should just be able to keep squeezing, which is why it's really important to do the pinch one, right? Because we can do closed guard, triangles, half guard, any open guard you can think of usually, once the open guard is done, you're pinching. Most submissions, the knees come together and you pinch, right? For uh, scapular dips for number three, we've got the position of of pushing forward with our scapulars here, right? My shoulders are back here, my shoulders are forward. For this position, the most common position for this is building frames and making the frames good. So when someone's got me flattened out, I crawl and build my frames, and then here, my scapulars are back, now they're forward. They're back, they're forward. I haven't moved my arm positioning at all. The only difference is my shoulders doing this motion. All right, so building frames, I have a, I have a shallow frame, Boom, now I have a strong frame. Now people can put weight right onto that elbow and I'm good to do stuff, right? So I'm here. That's that whole motion, the shoulders, the scapular dips. 
Number four, knees to chest. The most common positions for this is the triangle, closed guard, and uh, half guard. So in closed guard especially, when you're trying to break people down, it shouldn't just be I pull them down with my arms. It should be I do a little bit of the abductor where I'm, I'm pinching, and then I use my knees and pull to my chest really, really hard. So I pinch in a little bit, and then I pull to my chest. If I start to lock up a triangle choke, I push pull, I grab my triangle, and I'm here. It shouldn't just be a, a squeeze down. It shouldn't just be a squeeze here. Everything should be coming in together. I'm trying to get up into a little ball here. So there's another version of knees to chest. And then the most popular one for me is I go into half guard and I grab the lockdown. Right, I go lock down, and now I'm going knees to the chest, and I'm elevating people up. I'm getting them off balance to win my underhook or to win the underhook on the leg. Right? Knees to chest, super important. Those muscles get very tight very quick. Those are the first muscles to go for me when I'm sparring is, is those lower ab muscles and the hip flexors like that. Number five, we have back extensions. So the back extension is not as much of a good morning as it is a, my hips roll forward and then my back extends, right? So I'm, it's not like, like I'm not thinking about weight here and then I'm extending away. It's more of a, my hips roll. So my, the glutes squeeze. So that my hips are forward. Now my hips are forward. Now my back overextends. So let's pretend I have an ankle lock here and I choose my side. Once I choose my side, if you look at my back, it's not just here. I should be fully like overextending in that position and I should be able to lock up. I always tell people become the banana. You want to curve as much as you can going the opposite way, right? So arm bars, leg locks. Um, also initially when you're doing, before you do the knees to chest, when you're doing a closed guard pull, I want to back extend and have my hips off the mat. And then it becomes really strong and I build momentum to pull my knees to my chest. And that's why I break people down. And then lastly, uh, we've got Turkish get-ups. These are specific to you're almost out or they're almost past your guard. It's in the almost positions. So he gets around my legs, but he's not chest to chest yet. I build a frame and then I start doing a Turkish get-up, right? Where I'm trying to, I'm trying to, instead of being here where the weight's in my hand and I'm coming up and building a base, I've got my elbow pointing at him and I'm framing and I'm building either my legs back in front of him between us or I'm framing completely to get up because I'm trying to prevent the takedown. So very, very important movement. And uh, that should be all of them guys. Thank you.